and Steve are gonna do bits and have some fun. Dynamic banter. Honking horns and ringing bells and making good. Dynamic banter. Uh, don't forget the history rose. Dynamic banter. Bing. Beep, 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 boop, 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 beep, 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 boop, scoop, beep, boop, 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 album <laughs> <laughs> number nine uh, number nine guys welcome to dynamic oh I'll get it <laughs> Man, that was, that's what the mayor hears on his end one of those old rotary phones <laughs> you call them on your cell phone but it goes to a rotary phone <laughs> oh, I think you could do that yeah, I think, I think so if it's too. a landline or something. Dude, I remember a time when I would go to the thrift shop and there would be just like endless rotary phones. Yeah. And now it's like you they're get priceless. Some cash for them now. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Do you know that for sure? Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe not anymore. There was a time where it was like they were gone and they had like a resurgence. If there was a big demand for landlines that yeah. I don't know if there yeah. is or isn't, then I think those things would... Definitely. Yeah. I think it was like a novelty then, then the reason why people wanted them now. Sure. But Still you cool. can't find them anymore. I want a pay phone in my house. Dude, yeah. Just in the middle of the living One of those Bill and Ted phone booth ones? <laughs> yeah, the whole booth. <laughs> and it's like very loud. <laughs> I want that. I like yeah. those ones too that have like the crank on it. Hello, got a loan operator. Yeah. And they yeah. got those like bells. How can I connect you? Yeah. Guys, welcome to the show. Uh, last time you heard us we uh did an episode with our good friend william haynes uh who went off to fight a man with in a boxing ring yeah and and fight they did and probably fight they did probably but we don't know that for sure we don't know because we recorded that yesterday yeah in the timeline if you guys are trying to have a timeline but so should we do um we should record two separate podcasts yeah and one as if he won and right. one as if he lost or like we'll call a draw yeah. the same we'll thing just, as, a as loss. soon as we finish this one we'll just hit record and do a new one yeah. where he won or lost yeah which one is this one this is the one where he won okay congratulations again it's to will so cool that one how uh, first of all destroyed great job will hey destroyed him love you but and i knew he had it in it yeah <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Will. And second of all, something that I really wanted to talk about on that Will episode. Hello. <laughs> this is the mayor's office. Give me a one second, you gotta get this one. Hi, hello? Is this the mayor? Gwen, how do I answer the ring camera? (laughs) 
<laughs> His pizza is there, uh, and he wants to communicate. So, Mike, mm-hmm. I went and saw the Super Mario Brothers film. I'm all ears. But by this point, like, you know, it's been in theaters <laughs> for a bit, you... and I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> Okay, what else do we have to talk about? Anyway, we bumped into someone earlier today on the streets. Yeah. On our walk. Yeah. And it was like bonkers. Yes. This woman comes up to you with a gun. (laughs) And she's like, can you sign my gun? Yeah. Are you Mike Falzo? Um, I want you to sign my gun. Oh, we met this this beautiful young woman named Katie. Yeah. And she was very excited to say hi. And and she was like, I can't believe I'm running into you and Steve. And And we're uh, like, what? And we're like, leave us alone. If you've ever run into us in public, you know that the vibe is kind of don't talk to us. Yeah. Please. But she was like, uh, you know, I, I I'm like thinking this this is like a source fed fan or something or dynamic banter fan or yeah. whatever. And in, and she was like, I am the wife of Mason, the man that emails you guys about picking up dead dogs. Yeah. Mason the pet mortician. Mason the pet mortician. The one and only The one Mason and only the, the real guy that yeah. has been emailing us like interesting <laughs> incredible. Yeah, we crazy, spoke to him on the phone. We've spoken to him on the phone. <laughs> And there was his wife right there yeah. on our walk. Could you imagine that? That's fucking bonkers. The guy who picks up love is his name. <laughs> he is like, <laughs> the whole time he's just listening. And then what? He says, this is the mayor that he hangs up? Why is he? Because he was like in his in his mind, he's in the conversation. But then he's like, "Fuck off the phone." We didn't know he was there. I know. We got him. (laughs) He could have just left. (laughs) I would vote for Uh, this. Is the mayor? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So anyway, I guess. Katie, they had just separate, uh, they separated. They, they had just, just celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so happy. Yeah. Um, and so we just started kissing her. <laughs> they just, Kevin <laughs> kissed her nice. This is them, man. So. If you're single, we can kiss you. <laughs> it's true. We have permission. Mm-hmm. So um, they said they had just celebrated two years of, of going steady. And their second date ever was uh, was at my show last time I was at uh, in Atlanta. Yeah, and that is just the goddamn sweetest thing. So crazy! And they're gonna go catch a comedy show. Yeah, and you're fucking performing, dude. The the reason they stayed where they stayed was to be close to the comedy store. So to maybe catch I'm a Mike Falzone randomly wearing comedy store oh. sweatshirt, which you can get on. The internet. Can I just say, Mike? Yeah. You should go buy a motherfucking lottery ticket today. Yeah, dude, that does. That is the vibe. The vibe is that I might win a billion dollars today. You could, but I've already. I just want to say I have great friends and a great podcast and a beautiful wife and family. And I already won the lottery. Wait, should I play you the Oscar music? I was saying this whole thing is just to say (laughs) I already won the lottery. Well, guys, that's it. That closes up Dynamic Banter. I think we've reached a point where I'm happy, you're happy. We don't need to do the show anymore. We were doing it because we were so upset. We were so upset. And then we learned that people met and married and live a happy life because of us. Because of you, Mike. Did I hear somebody say goddamn lottery? Mayor, are you here? Yeah. Hi, Mayor. What's up? I was just saying that I won the lottery. We're not going to be able to pay you. Man, it must be tiring to be the mayor. They're at the door! (laughs) Honey, they're gonna leave! They're gonna leave! (laughs) So anyway, Katie and Mason are here and uh i have a show on uh this sunday night which was the last sunday night. dude this <laughs> for is you the, yeah 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 well they don't need to know so were you there who knows were you there well you you <laughs> you promoted that show on the will episode yes thank goodness 
which was yesterday for us. Um, a week ago for you. <laughs> but so serendipitous that uh that Katie was there and um What a weird and oh and it's very nice. <laughs> so nice and wonderful and strange and weird and uh and we mentioned to her that uh man, so many good history roads that he sent in. And we were like, man, some of those were like way out there though. And she was like, Oh, the donkey one? And we were like, Excuse me? Mm. The what? Where's our donkey? Um, um, ee-haw, 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 ee-haw. Ee-haw. <laughs> Void donkey. I was thinking of scream. Yeah, that's more of a goat than a donkey. But Katie, One of the, somewhere uh, between somewhere you got a goat over there, donkey. You got a donkey over there somewhere. We got a fucking pig over there. So anyway, <laughs> does Et's head come up? Does that toy head come up? Pull what if it, it up. came up to fucking? Oh, yeah, what if it went so high? No. I think it does. Let me see it. It does? Every E.T. It's a secret with every E.T. So you're just going to fucking decapitate this Let thing. Let me rip this fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that E.T. Not. thing over there, does that fucking head come off? I'll rip a bitch. <laughs> anyway, so, but she was like, oh, the donkey story? And we're like, excuse me, the what story? The don- <laughs> What? What'd I do? What? You know, um, I'm sorry. You know, you know. I'm sorry I ripped your head. Um, um. <laughs> She's pointing at me, dude. Well. Why, the whole episode? You said. You said. I said. Well, does the thing's head come up? And then I said. <laughs> the thing has Probably made. not. I said this the extra thing. <laughs> And then I gave her to you, and you tried to rip her head off. Oh, oh no. E.T., I'm sorry, okay? I'm oh, sorry I ripped no. your head. Oh, no. I'm going to get a So anyway, we were like, what's this donkey story? And I was like, wait a minute. Don't tell us. Just send us. Tell yeah. him to tell him he has to send in the donkey story. Yeah, man. tell the storyteller. So uh, hopefully, at some point in the future, we'll get a story. We'll get whatever this donkey story is. Apparently, it involves a hacksaw. I think we're all going to be different <laughs> afterwards. I think that if, if you could bet on one thing, we're all going to be a little different after this donkey I story. I agree. I think we will be too. Yeah. And that's what we aim to do on this little shit cast. That's true. We aim to be just a little bit different on this shit cast. So anyway, uh, Mike, what do we have on the table right here, man? Um, so we... these things right here, if you're watching the video episode or if you're listening with your eyes, give me one second. <laughs> they just call the worst times, don't they? They really do. So these are the Cloverfield tweets and questions flexi discs that are, um, that come with the first like 300 copies of the record, the dynamic banter record that is on a pallet on its way to Byron right now to send to you thank you so much for all your patience we know it took a long time for you guys took a long time for us it literally took the same amount of time for everyone involved but even longer for us because we knew about it longer than you did (laughs) and we were like scratching our skin off yeah we're scratching our goddamn skin off. we're scratching our fucking skin off because we knew like we were being we were trying to be patient and you guys have been awesome too we know you guys have been super patient and we've seen questions asked about where our goddamn records and we're we the the pitchforks were out we've seen the tweets we've seen the quesiums yeah and so but the but luckily you know now we have the flexi discs in hand. They're very cool. They sound very cool. And this is, we were Mike, talking a little a bit about it. We'll explain it's it like it, it's a disc and it plays on the record. Players. <laughs> <laughs> like someone asked if you wanted a drink. <laughs> and, um, and. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the mayor is listening? I think the mayor was always there like us. And there's your proof. He hung up right away. So right this away. is a compilation of tweets, the tweets and questions segment. 
that is uh, that devolves into madness from the Cloverfield podcast, and it's the origin story of dynamic banter. And you listen to this, dude. We were discussing this because we listened to this in in the entirety um, a couple minutes ago. Yeah, Kevin. And I just think it's really cool to listen to this little eleven minute thing or whatever the fuck. And then put on the dynamic banter record right, right after. after. Yeah, it's a nice companion piece. Yeah, I wonder what that sounds like because there was like a a definite like flow to this where it starts very much like we just started the podcast like yeah yesterday. Well, we were talking about while we were listening to it like how the fuck did we fill like a podcast full of <clears throat> Cloverfield shit? Yeah. But the reality is is that it that was basically <laughs> dynamic banter yeah. with us talking about Cloverfield sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then it just evolved into dynamic banter. But yeah, if you got this flexi disc, you've definitely got what you have in your hands is like the origins of dynamic banter, pretty much. And it's like, and it's really cool. Like, I I only ever got like one or two flexi discs ever in my life. Yeah, same. And then they started to like come back as like really cool, like special bonus items with like records. Yeah, and it's like awesome. Uh, but dude, do you remember way back in the day there was like a Ghostbusters flexi disc? No, not that one specifically. Yeah. But I honestly thought you were gonna bring up, um, which fast food re- I'm looking at you like you're not 12 years old. <laughs> which fast food restaurant had the the song that said everything on the menu? Was it McDonald's oh, or Burger it King? It was uh, the Whopper. Or no, no, it was the. It was like something, something uh, to the lettuce, something to hold the lettuce. Yeah, but it was McDonald's radish. or Burger King. It was the Big Mac. The Big Mac song. Yeah, I think you're right. So there was, when I was a little tiny kid, they gave out flexi Whoa. discs. And they were like, and if, it was that? if you got one where the people on the disc finished the song, Without fucking up, you like won this big sweepstakes. Sweepstakes were huge in the eighties, yeah. by the way. The million way. dollar McDonald's record, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. It says you could win a million dollars instantly. Play this record now. So you go home and you play the record, and if the people there were like eight people singing on the record, if they as a group made it through the song, you would win the money. Oh, so the records are all like normal. It's the regular song and then you lose, but then you get a record of the regular song. But if you found one where they messed up, no other way around, like most of that, there was like one up. where they got it right. Whoa. And the rest of them were them like, no fucking way. Up. yeah. So I, I remember that whole experience. Good morning class. <laughs> yeah. Today dude. we're going to learn the McDonald's menu song and give a listener out there a chance to win a million dollars. This is scratching so, a weird little me. kid thing. Repeat after me. No, no. No, no. Uh, okay. Okay. Here Kinda goes. Slaps. Here, Here goes. goes. Big Mac McDLT, a quarter pounder with some cheese filet, oh. a fish, a hamburger, a cheeseburger, a happy meal, McNuggets, tasty golden fresh fries, regular or larger size, a salad, chef or garden, or a chicken salad, oriental, big big breakfast, egg muffin, hot hot cakes and sausage, maybe biscuits, bacon, egg and cheese or sausage, Danish hash browns, two and four dessert, hot apple pies and Sunday three varieties, a soft serve, three kinds of shakes and chocolatey chip cookies and a drink. Damn, dude, that guy had to really do that. <laughs> yeah, Is that, that guy had to rap. Guy? He was like the first like uh, like Kowalski. mumble rap. <laughs> 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 Pickle, 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 pickle. Coca Cola, diet, Coca and orange, drink a sprite and coffee. Pick up the Dude, I didn't know. I didn't know about this. Dude, it's so it's much fun. The chorus. I don't think there is a chorus. Orange juice, I love McDonald's. Good time, great taste, and I get this all at one place. Got it? Got it. No, it's just like you say all the things. You just read the menu. <laughs> yeah. Because if this class can do the McDonald's menu song all the way through, a listener out there is going to win a million dollars. So then you're listening to this in your in your fucking room. You're like, Oh, fucking is fuck these fucking dish. people. Let's try again. This is the winner. Big Mac McDLT, a quarter pounder with some cheese. Big Mac McDLT, a quarter pounder with some cheese. Filet a fish, a hamburger, a cheeseburger, a happy meal. Filet a fish, a hamburger, and cheeseburger. Oh, he helps him through. Meal. You're on a roll. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, they got it from here. We should make a movie about the making of this. <laughs> Uh, you know, three people died during the recording. <laughs> the, I, you can hear it. Uh, dude, there was a uh, Ghostbusters, like Ghostbusters cereal put out a flexi disc, like in the cereal. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can find that one. Dude, and now we're of the prestigious 
class of entertainers who have released a flexi disc. Well, we we're really sticking to our guns when we say some of the stuff. I mean, most a lot of the stuff that we sell as merchandise for our show is like a reflection of stuff we used to love when we were like younger. Yeah, stuff that we like, like flexi discs and uh, zines, tape. And tapes. Dude, that's why, and and a lot of people don't know this, but me and Steve each have a box of everything we've ever come out with just for us in our house. That's right. And and no one can have that. No one can have our box. Not even when we die. Not even of the stuff I don't like that much. I don't, I, I, uh... Pickle, 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 pickle. Here's the Ghostbusters flex. Welcome to the... Welcome to the new Ghostbusters movie mystery. In just a moment, you'll get a chance to meet Egon Spengler, the brave, courageous hero from the Ghostbusters movies. Now, kids, answer the three questions that Egon will ask you later on this record, and you could be eligible to win one of the two grand prizes in the new Ghostbusters movie mystery sweepstakes. Whoa. And right now, I take answer the questions later. Egon answer them right to the record. We'll hear Hello, you. Ghostbusters fans, <laughs> have you been looking out for ghosts lately? Great. Who's this now supposed to be? Chance to be an you got it? Of the Ghostbusters team. You can win a trip to Hollywood for you and your family and meet me, Dr. Egon Spengler. Dude, oh, this is 100% like we d- we forgot to hire someone to do Egon's voice. Oh, a billion percent. Is there anyone in the office who kind of sounds like A billion Egon? percent. Pickle, 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 pickle. He starts singing the song. <laughs> Dude, he got no. This should be a button on the board, by the way. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Definitely now it will be. Anyway. Dude, imagine having a guest and hitting the McDonald's song button. <laughs> Hey, sorry, I just have orange to drink a sprite and coffee decaf too. I love that milk. You know what time it is. Juice, I love McDonald's. Good time, great taste. And I get this all at one a quarter pound. Can I get this all in one place? Uh, but I love this how is... he says, I love McDonald's. Can I get this all in one place? You know, all... you just read the menu to the place. Right? Bro. That's bad writing. <laughs> That's just bad writing. <laughs> how did people get this? Is that over? It's done? You can't get it now? You can't get it now? I think you these are all it? spoken for, so check this out. I wish I knew the words because I would just start. Thank you. (laughs) Just imagine me doing it. Um, So these go out to the first 300 people who bought the record. And then we have like a half of one of these stacks, like maybe 40 something to sell at like uh, our live show in Salem. On May 12th. Yeah. If you go to our show, you might be able to snag. The last of these. Yes, but they will be, and we agreed on this, $20,000 each. That's right. We did agree on this. We you guys all agreed on this. You guys said we did a Twitter poll, again. and you said you'd rather pay 20000 than 40000 Those were the two choices. So each of these will be $20,000 each, and we're going to sell all of them, and you'll never hear from us again. What do you think about that? But yeah, come to Salem and you'll be able to get one of these. They're super fun. It was a nice experience. I don't like it pointing at me. <laughs> Dude, this is when you first got your ET. And it was on... It wasn't pointing at anyone. <laughs> it was eye It was level. literally not pointing at anyone. It was pointing though. into people. Yeah, but you can walk away from... <laughs> not those eyes. Not those, those eyes. eyes. Not they not follow your eyes. eyes. All right. Well, anyway, these no, are no, rad. No, no. And thank you guys for making it uh, possible for us to release merch like that. Yeah, dude. Thank Super you for having rad fun stuff. with us. All right. How are we doing here? Is it time for some ads? No, 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 no. All right. It's not time for ads. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the movie. You saw the you saw the McDonald's movie, (laughs) the Super McDonald's movie. I did. No, I did. I liked it. Let's get going. No, I liked it. I liked it a lot, actually. I was like, "What, dude? Just name something from Mario. It's in it." Yeah. And so, and it just doesn't. It never disappoints you as a Mario fan. That's great. And the voice was fine. The voice was fine. On the second viewing of it, I saw it twice. Whoa. 
The second time I saw it, dude, check out how magical this shit is. I got to see it with my nephews, yeah. which is always a fun treat. But my youngest one, my youngest nephew, Max, he's like five or six or something. Or five. He, It's his first movie, dude. Whoa. It was his first movie theater movie. And he's going to love Mario forever. Cause dude, forever. And Unless they already, he hated the movie. Dude, they already love Mario a lot. Okay. Both my nephews, Eli and Max, they were like talking to me about it before the movie. Yeah. And I was like, what do we love about I was like, you guys played any Mario games? And they were like, oh, yeah, Uncle Steve, we play all this. Dude, they played like all the games. And in fact, I'm in the middle of playing one right now. Which one? It's called Mario, Super Mario 3D World. And it's the one where you can get Mario in the cat costume. That's like the first one with the cat costume, I guess. Okay. But they were all like fucking raving about it and shit. So I was like, this is perfect. So it was uh, it was Max's first movie theater movie. Yeah. And, and it got me thinking about my first movie theater movie, which I think we've talked about before. We've talked about our first movie theater movies, I think. I wonder if I remembered it last time we talked. I know do what I remember? think it is. What do you think it is? I feel like it might be All Dogs Go to Heaven. Whoa. Maybe. Yeah. That tracks. That was like. Pretty, we were pretty young. I'm trying to think if, if I was watching that movie and I was like, whoa, this is the first time I've ever seen something like this. Do planetariums count? If they showed a movie in it. It was Tom Hanks doing the Nuggets, tasty golden French. That was part of it. <laughs> Those are all the constellations. Uh, dude, my pickle, first movie pickle, pickle. ever. Yeah. Pickle, 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 pickle. <laughs> Tom Hanks doing it. My oh, first God. movie. <laughs> It could have been. A lot of like really super famous actors started out somewhere. You gigs. Know? They're just doing gigs. gigs. Dude, I watched a video of fucking Ryan Gosling. Like everyone was talking about Ryan Gosling and the new Barbie movie trailer. And they were like, oh man, this motherfucker is, what are we going to see him dance? This guy can't dance. He's an actor. Mm -hmm. And then they cut to a clip of him as like a really young kid, like dancing in some like video i don't know what it was but it was like the 80s and he's like killing it yeah he's like a fucking prodigy does ken dance was that an important plot point well in the tra the trailer the movie's gonna be a musical yeah. oh fun it's gonna be a musical yeah. barbie the musical it looks great man make me kiss my friends greta gerwig is directing it and she's like a big indie darling she directs a lot of like mumblecore indie movies that people love a lot sure. and uh noah baumbach is also a co-writer on that and he He's also another Mumblecore indie director. What he is worked Mumblecore? With... Mumblecore is like, oh, I just wanted to tell you that I love you. And it's like those indie movies where they're just like sitting there and they're like, oh, I don't know if I love you so much anymore. Maybe I'll love you. I don't know. Maybe I love you. Like those kind of like indie, like what am I looking at? <laughs> what the fuck kind of movie is this shit? Yeah. And, but they're like funny and weird and like good. Like Wes Anderson movies are kind of considered okay. Mumblecore and stuff. But, uh, sure. But Noah Baumbach has worked with Wes Anderson before. And so, and they're on in charge of the Barbie movie, dude. Great. That's great. So we're going to get like a bonkers, weird, like mm. Brady Bunch movie kind of like movie. Barbie? Super Mario? I know. What's next? New Ninja Turtles? Ninja Turtles, yeah. They're coming. Really? Yeah, there's and a Ninja Turtles. And they're redoing... Uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice 2 apparently is coming Dude, out. we're about to have a second it's child. crazy. <laughs> huh. We're being served all this delicious nostalgia yeah. on a piping hot pizza pan. Here's, we need to interject ourselves. Here's, this is the plan, okay. dude. Tell me if you're in the plan. I'm in, dude. I'm listening. Oh, the mayor's out. We got to make sure no one else is <laughs> listening to the out. plan. He already hung up. I don't want to get mesmerized by the nostalgia. I know. I want to recognize the void and I want to fill the void with something. Whoa. Yeah. So you want to move on. I want to enjoy everything. Yeah. Everything's going to be nice to see. You want to enjoy what's coming rather than what was gone. What I want to gone. make something that fits into... If the most popular shit is all shit from our childhood, yeah. I want to be like, we were there. That's awesome. You know what else would have been cool? Like this. this. Or yeah. we understand everyone who's enjoying this stuff. They would also like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. We we have a unique... We're in a unique position in this time when nostalgia is like 
big, big media, big bucks. Big, big. Is that we were there. Yeah. We were there during those times. Yeah. So, and you know, Seth Rogen is making this new Ninja Turtle movie that looks like Into the Spider-Verse. It's all like, uh, it's like stop motion 2D animation. Really? It it looks like Spider-Verse. Yeah. You know Spider Verse, how it looked all like like weird animation and shit. Yeah, so it's kind of like that, but it looks more like it was like sketched. It looks really fucking cool. Yeah, but it's like a crazy cool cast of all people that like definitely grew up watching Ninja Turtles and shit like that. But you're right, man. Those people, the people who like the guys that made Stranger Things. Like, they're, like, our age, pretty much. They're, like, nerds. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Because they made, like, a new thing based in, like, whatever. Uh, I I don't think I'm looking to make a nostalgic thing. I'll figure it out. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know. You want to utilize the specific skills of having grown up during that time, but make something new. Yeah. Like, if people like this general type of stuff. Yeah. They would like a thing that's kind of like this, and they yeah. would just figure out what that. We're is. also like seeing a lot of like, like <laughs> there should be, we should call it like bathtub toys or something like because people are <laughs> yeah. like doing a lot of bathtub toys. <laughs> is that like right? Mario fighting Donkey Kong, and like we've got like all the Star Wars guys is like Super Smash Brothers is yeah, bathtub like toy all, time. Like a lot of movies, right? Like Marvel's all like match smashing up action figures and shit. Yeah, like all these big huge movies are essentially like adults smashing toys in the bathtub. Dude, together. we should make a remake of Hunt for the Red October. But the it's submarine the has um, baking soda in it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to put more baking soda in it on won't rise. <laughs> We're sinking in the bottom of the ocean, boy. Check on the baking soda. Somebody call mom. Someone call mommy. We need more baking soda. <laughs> That's the whole movie. Give me one second. I was going to say. Oh, you got to answer this? <laughs> Dude, I was going to say that. Uh, the movie is like Hunt for Red October or something, but it's like a giant kid is like controlling all of them in a bathtub. And you see like the the kid's hand holding like the guy, the general. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. Guy, like, yeah, crew, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all the explosions and the kid's just hitting toys. Dude, the- but it's like shot like a real beautiful cinematic yeah, beautiful. movie. Imagine the love scene. Where it's oh, like, oh yeah, where they, he turns the toys and they <laughs> and you hear the plastic. Yeah, yeah, it's like a Barbie <laughs> and like a GI Joe. You're kind of a tall woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a short man. <laughs> yeah. And then you take the kids there. It's like a giant. They're moving in slow motion. Yeah. It's just all in a bathtub. Yeah, dude. I saw this fucking. This has nothing to, almost nothing to do with all anything. All right. I saw this TikTok the other day. And it was really, really good CGI. Talking about giants, mm. sl- slow moving giants. Oh, is this the things where it's like, are you creeped out by this? Yeah, like, yeah, I've seen those. And I was. It was. It's pretty fucking crazy. Like there's a this coming one. Over yeah, yeah. Shit. There's this one where <laughs> you're in the deepest ocean. Yeah, which is already the scariest it's place. It's avoided ever. on its own. And you look to the left, and there's this giant, like Greek statue of yeah, a man with yeah. like wide eyes. So you're like in this like Atlantis type yeah, place. Yeah, like destroyed. And it's so vast and it's on your phone and you feel the vastness of this thing and then you look over to the right and there's another one so you're like okay i must be at the top of like something that means something in atlantis it's very big and bold and very intense and then from the depth between them another one comes like shooting like as fast as possible yeah 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 it's it's weird. There's a lot of like phobias that are surrounded by like voids, like back rooms and like big open spaces where you, there's like no destination and the, mm-hmm. there's like doorways and like because anything could be anywhere. Yeah, and then there's stuff with like underwater, like things that are statues that are underwater, are, yeah. like a, pho- a phobia. Really, for a lot of people, yeah. people don't like wet statues. Like I guess not. Yeah, it, it shows that like things are like abandoned and like they're kind of like I don't know. Maybe it's the vastness, the loneliness. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so the wetness. giant things are fucking scary as yeah. fuck. That, I didn't that like, like it. I know. Because it shows you a perspective of like what it would be like if that actually happened. Yeah, and dude. One like, of those things where a giant is destroying the city and you're yeah. like, what would you do in this situation? Yeah, dude. Those are so fun. Those are always the funniest shit because yeah. it's like, well, what are we supposed to do? I watch it I'd for a long angry. time. I'd be angry. 
<laughs> I if I knew I couldn't get away, you can't. Yeah, I would watch it for a long time. I'd just be like, yeah, let's see the end of the universe happen, dude. Like Cloverfield, imagine. So the thing that makes Cloverfield so scary is that it's huge and you kind of don't know where it is, yeah. but it could be anywhere. Yeah. Imagine watching that thing from like Jersey City. Yeah. And you're looking over the horizon and it's like, it's definitely doing stuff, but sometimes it's just like kind of confused yeah. on where to go. Yeah. So it also does like mundane shit. Yeah. It probably like tries to scratch itself on yeah, a building on a bil- at some and point. And destroys it and shit. Yeah. But it, there's like a probably a good time where it's looking around. It's like trying to eat stuff it can't eat. Yeah. It's like an animal. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> I and think that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, fuck, I guess I could get away before it gets over here. Yeah, it's looking over there right yeah, now. We could probably get one, in our car. There's like the ones where like on TikTok where it's like an alien comes out of like a portal and it like just destroys everything. Like the world just yeah. blows up yeah. and you're just like there to witness that. And yeah. it's like, what would you do if this, yeah. if this happened? Yeah. It's like, wouldn't I be able I to tell you. Die. Wouldn't be able to tell you afterwards. Right after, I guess I'd just be gone, right? <laughs> yeah, die. I would just die. I would I die. It looks like everything's dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be dead. Everything in this vicinity is dying. Yeah, so and if, if I'm, I'm there, there, you're saying I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Honey, I can't get the ring. How do you turn on the ring? Honey, how do you get? How do you answer the ring? There's someone at the ring. Honey, I'm gonna have to knock on the door myself because I don't think they're they're gonna leave. I'm gonna go around back and let them in. <laughs> All right, time for some ads. Yeah. yeah. Kevin's ready now. Yeah. Kevin loves the ads. Kevin loves an ad. Kevin's always like, what do I... I got nothing to buy. Kevin skips the TV show parts and watches just the commercials. Yeah, he tapes... <laughs> he tapes TV shows and he cuts out the narrative part. He does. Guys, hello, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. <coughs> Whoa, cool. I just got invited to enable... Creator subscriptions on Twitter. Yeah. What do you have to do to make someone want to subscribe to you on Twitter? Show you beebs? Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Guys, HelloFresh is, uh, what is HelloFresh? If you're like, wait a minute, you, uh, skunk. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I love that Skunk got an echo. <laughs> <laughs> Just Skunk. I'm very particular. Well, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip the trip to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. That was a slug. He's getting sucked into the void piece by piece. What would you do if you got sucked into the void piece by piece? I don't know. (laughs) I told you. I told you it's weird. There's something weird about being pointed at. Hiding just the hand. <laughs> she climbed all the way up here. Guys, HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime this spring by delivering pre portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes right to your door. You can skip the checkout lines and get outside in the warmer weather because HelloFresh has dinner covered. And April is Earth Month, and HelloFresh is always committed to a cleaner planet. On average, HelloFresh meals have a 31% lower carbon footprint than the same meals made from supermarket ingredients. Plus, nearly all HelloFresh packaging materials are curbside recyclable in most areas of the United States. And good food is too precious to waste! 
HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients cut down on your food waste by at least 23% compared to grocery shopping, which is good for your wallet and the planet. And hey, you don't want to open the fridge. And sometimes the vegetables look at you like you haven't seen them since they were babies. Mike, we love HelloFresh. I've got a whole delivery coming in for me, finally. I've, it's been a while since I've put used to putting the delivery system into my personal home usage. <laughs> but Mike, you've gotten a few since I have not been getting them. <laughs> That's 100% right. And don't you love it? It's delicious. It's easy to make. I do love it. I do love skipping the trip. Me too, man. Because I don't like going to the grocery store. I don't like being around that many people. I don't like the choice paralysis. I don't like going to the grocery store when I'm hungry and coming I home with know. stuff I don't need. I like perfectly portioned stuff. <laughs> And I like directions on how to make that stuff to make it seem like maybe it came from a restaurant, but it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. So, um, <laughs> let's say, let's say at the end of the day, you go to HelloFresh.com slash Banter50 and you use that code Banter50 for 50% off. Plus, your first box ships free! free. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Banter50. Use that code Banter50. <laughs> for 50% off. Plus, your first box ships for free! Thanks, HelloFresh. Warby Parker! Oh! Warby Parker was founded with a mission to inspire <laughs> and impact the world with vision, purpose, and style. Offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, <laughs> contact lenses, and eye exams. Warby Parker is committed to providing you with exceptional vision care. <laughs> Warby Parker offers everything. Warby Parker offers everything you need for happier eyes. Eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, eye exams. You heard it earlier. You can shop with them online or in stores. And glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> <sighs> and you can try Warby Parker's free home try-on program where you order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free. <laughs> oh, my God. That was awful to see. I skipped a few. That looked years. crazy. I've never seen that one before. <laughs> Uh, and guys, guess what? There's no obligation to buy. Uh, you, the ships free and includes prepaid shipping return uh, label. So guys, try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. You can order those five pairs of glasses uh, to try at home for free. <laughs> There's no obligation to buy. It ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. So why don't you try five pairs of glasses at home for free <laughs> at WarbyParker.com slash banter. That's WarbyParker.com slash <laughs> Bitch!
<laughs> Thank you, Warby Parker. <laughs> dude, can I say real quick that yeah. my favorite sunglasses are from Warby Parker? Oh, dude, for real. Yeah. yeah, and I never find sunglasses that fit my head, and they sent me a awesome pairs and nice. i was very excited to get them they're I the like only that. ones i haven't lost either because they fit something i think i'm in trouble with warby parker because i haven't returned a pair of glasses Whoa. <laughs> guys tushy <laughs> tushy's <laughs> Kevin likes Tushy a Dude, lot. Dude, I want to go home, but I'm already home. <laughs> <laughs>tell you something very rarely do you get a sponsor that changes your whole life yeah. and your outlook on life and your outlook on hygiene by the time you're i'm in my late 30s hygiene's supposed to be wrapped up oh, by this point yeah we're supposed to have it figured out we're supposed to have learned everything for you it's supposed to be old hat by this point oh yeah it's supposed to be old clean hat the problem is is that there are a lot of people that are still excuse my french stuck in the stone age <laughs> And you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using a dry... You're talking about using rocks to wipe yourself. Awful piece of whatever material to wipe your precious one-time-only bottom. That's your bottom. You get it once. You get one bottom. You get one bottom. When you're born, you get a few things. Two and kidneys. on there is one bottom. That's where it's... <laughs> What cartoon character was from one bot? <laughs> anyway, drop the bot. You know what could? Uh, you know? You know what would really benefit from from some spring cleaning? Your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Switching from wasteful toilet paper to sustainable Hello Tushy bidet. <laughs> oh my goodness! Gets your bottom twice as sparkly while cleaning up your impact on the planet. Not only that, Steve. Yeah. But go to the store and get toilet paper. A fraction as much as you would. Absolutely. We're talking about now just using paper. The The function of toilet paper changes to dab yourself dry rather than wipe yourself silly. I agree, dude. I agree. I'm way in, in this with you, dude, to the very end. And I'd love having you in there with me. I'm in there, dude. can be as easy as taking a dump thanks to hello tushy bidet because adding a bidet to your daily cleaning ritual is better for your butt and the planet so and you cut tp use by as much as 80 percent while feeling fresher than a babbling brook Chosh. <laughs> And look, guys, bidets don't have to be expensive or high-tech to be luxurious. The Hello Tushy bidet is the least intimidating butt washer on the planet, coming in at under $100 and fitting onto your existing toilet in less than eight minutes. And I'll tell you, I put together a Tushy bidet myself. It's in my guest bathroom. How'd you do? I, it was easy as pie. And everyone who comes to my home and uses the guest bathroom has the opportunity to use one of the greatest inventions of the modern age to have their life changed mm -hmm. there is almost nothing aside from drinking it to keep yourself hydrated there's, there's nothing yeah. more important you could do with water yeah either drink it or shoot it up you quit walking around with a crusty butt and get yourself a dang water bidet all right? And look! <laughs> Tell it to she bidet cleans your bum two times better than wiping and prevents poop particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch, like your children's mouths. And food that goes into your children's mouths. And if you don't have a bidet in your home, Nance, I'm gonna assume your kids are eating your poop. <laughs> And whoever else eats your food. 
you might be having people coming over just for the food. You have people coming over to eat poop pie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, 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 oh. You're, using, oh, oh. You're using paper to wipe it up. You're getting it all over your hands, Nance. Let me tell you, that soap in there is not going to take care of the poop under your fingernails. <laughs> that soap ain't going to be there for you at the end. Oh, oh, that soap won't be there in Kingdom Come. So, every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. And there's over 100,000 five-star reviews. I'm sure Mike and I are in there somewhere. Guys, go to hellotushy.com forward slash banter and use that promo code banter. Use the promo code banter. And guess what? I'll tell you what. You're going to get 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. That's hellotushy.com slash banter. <laughs> For 10% off. Why don't you gift yourself or someone else you love the cleanest ass in town? Gift yourself or someone you love the absolute the gift of the cleanest ass in town. Nothing you did because water cleans your butt and twice as good as paper. This is the mayor's office. Have you been listening to today's episode? Every word of it. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty cool. (laughs) Cool. Uh, (laughs) Damn, that's cool. All right. I just say go for it. Yeah? Someone did a Steve impression. Do we think this is worth exploring? I'd like to hear Someone it. named Tal Arkin. Tal Arkin? Tal Arkin. <sighs> says... Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's Dunkin's, and we, we, uh, there's, we have McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> is that the whole thing? Yeah, that's the whole clip! <laughs> so, we have... Uh, there's Dunkin's, and we we uh, there's we have McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not there's the, the worst cadence thing. Impression I've ever. I heard. think I think, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Talarkin. But if you get stoned by yourself and do that voice, I could see you being yeah. like, "That's like Steve." Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not the worst I've ever heard. No, if sure. you squint and and as far away, that's Steve. There's a cadence thing that is similar. Mm -hmm. Yep. We got to work on that pitch. But 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 man, (laughs) we got a bit of throwback (laughs) listener here, Michael (laughs) McHale. I think. Did you see this? That's a great shirt, Kevin. What do you think of his shirt? You see this? It's great. It's real good. good. I like it. Good coordination, good color. You see this? <laughs> Mikhail says, "Hello, boys." I hate having a podcast just like every other podcast. <laughs> so boring. Change it, it is, up. It's just like every single. <laughs> Hello, boys. I was laughing my ass off in public the other day because of the "Wouldn't You Wish It" episode. Wouldn't you wish it? And that reminded me of my two favorite parts of this entire podcast <laughs> from the same episode. That's big news. 
Please listen to this. All right. Wouldn't you listen? Wouldn't you listen? <laughs> okay, so this is this is the entire part to 8.30, please. Okay, here we go. Now we listen to us. Everybody shut up. This is over. Podcast is over. If, it doesn't get any better than that. There's no way. There's like <laughs> We have to stop nine, the podcast. There's like nine, ten thousand people that listen to this podcast, I think, as far as I could tell from Nine, Spreaker, ten thousand? There's about nine, nine thousand. That's about a nine, ten thousand. <laughs> Man, that burger was so good. It was like a nine, ten thousand. <laughs> What do you think, Joe? You think thumbs up or thumbs down? Hey, from one to ten, how many thousands is that? <laughs> Good. I love it. Nine, nine, this is episode got, six of dude, the show. I think and that nine, one's ten, on the record. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, Mike, Mikhail, Mike, Mikhail, Mike says, I remember back in the day hearing Mike say there's about nine, 10,000 people listening to this podcast. And I clearly remember my face going, huh? And then Steve commenting on it immediately after made me lose my fucking shit. I think I've never laughed as hard as I did of that. And that's not an insult to your current content. I think that's just me getting old and slowly dying. <laughs> the next one is also one of my all-time favorites, and this is we listen to eleven thirty-eight. Here we go. Open your psalm book to eleven thirty-eight. I got an audition for something, or like somebody emailed me, and it was a really big opportunity, and I don't tell my folks about it right away. Yeah, because yeah, you don't want to go like, oh man, I'm doing <laughs> this, and then it doesn't happen. Because yeah. then they're like, what happened to that one thing? Yeah, and you're like, sorry, mom, I'm not good. Turns out I'm not good, Mom. You have to say that? Mama, no one likes me. <laughs> Mama, Hollywood don't like me. Help me, Mama. Help Hollywood like me. <laughs> sorry, Mama. Yeah, it's a sorry, Mama. Next episode, your mom goes to Hollywood <laughs> to make it like you. <laughs> I don't like my boy. <laughs> my mijo Why do you like him <laughs> Man we've got a lot of Transformers movies to get to <laughs> What do you want <laughs> My mijo he says you don't like him <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that uh, You're what's... a mama right <laughs> That's what my mom would do. She would go to Hollywood and do that. Yeah, you're a mama. You're a mama. You're you a get mama. it. <laughs> you get it. I love that. What do you think the climax of that movie is? What happens? I think towards? Hollywood likes him and he ends up being a big star. <laughs> do you think your mom hits somebody at some point? I think there's a funny scene where there's an accident. Like... <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Well, that's good, man. Both very uh, funny classic moments. He says, I remember fucking losing my mind at that moment as well. I think there's a funny scene where there's an accident fucking killed me. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's an accident scene. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> movies, movies without an accident scene aren't really good. <laughs> I don't like a movie unless there's some kind of accident. There's got to be some kind of accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when does an accident happen in this one? <laughs> dude, that person loves the Fast and Furious movies because yeah. a lot of accidents happen. Dude, there. there's like a part of the pitch meeting. They're like, and then, uh, so the mother and the father are out and they're at the vineyard. They're having lunch at the vineyard. And then there's an accident. There's an accident. <laughs> So, I, oh, dude, I'm writing the new Fast and Furious script. Yeah, Can I read ahead. for you a little piece? Yeah, yeah. All right. Jan Vase, uh, Vin Diesel. Sorry, I don't remember his name. Jan Vason, you Vin said? Vin Diesel's character's name is what? I don't have no idea. Family Vin ties. Diesel, family, family man. <laughs> family man is driving in his car as fast as he can, and suddenly there's an accident. <laughs> then he keeps going, and there's another accident. Dude, and I, then he get... <laughs> I have one. I'm writing the Beetlejuice movie. Okay. Newlywed couple yeah. goes into the, uh, they're moving into a new house in yeah. the countryside. Yeah. But before they can get there, there's an accident. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think about that? 
fuck, that's really funny. The movie is that's called <laughs> The movie's called Scrooge. <laughs> Dude. And it's like Bill Murray is visited by the three ghosts of Christmas. At one point, he gets into a taxi there cab. There is an accident. <laughs> Dude, what if we get reviewed accidents in movies? <laughs> every, every Hollywood, every, every movie accent, accident rated. rated top 100 movie accidents. Top 100 movie accidents. <laughs> Well, here's one. There was a, quite an accident in Meet Joe Black. <laughs> Brad Pitt gets hit by two cars, and it's a bit of an accident. Let's check it out. This one's from Happy Gilmore, where <laughs> a car or a cart runs into the uh, the grandstand. A bunch of people fall down. Kind of a rough accident. Kind of an accident. Let's check it out. <laughs> yeah. Happy is then struck by the vehicle, and the woman does the weirdest scream in movie history. Let's I can't check it tell out. How many accidents we got today? <laughs> The stunt coordinator. How many accidents are we do? Well, this I'm one? the accident coordinator. And I'm here to make sure every accident seems like it's an accident. Um. Okay, so he says. Uh, anyways, this is basically basically my love letter to you guys. I've listened to every single episode, and I'm still listening. <laughs> And there's there's your gift from us. <laughs> Take one of those. Uh, I'm a guy, and I'm not gay, so it's okay for guys to show love. I agree. That's a good, there's a great message in there. I'm glad that he was clear about his sexual orientation. Uh, answers from an apartment complex worker. Oh, yeah, I saw that. What's this? Damien. Uh, Darius. Darius says... Hello, boom boys. I'm a longtime listener, and I am a maintenance technician. Boom, 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 at boys. My <laughs> <laughs> at my apartment complex, and I'm here to answer your dog poop questions. Oh, and give some shade at Mike. Sorry, Mike. I love you. Oh, somebody's gonna give some shade oh, at me. I think I'll be alright. <laughs> Last episode, Mike said he was upset that they started maintenance at eight in the morning upstairs. Yeah. At my complex, <laughs> quite quite time ends at seven, <laughs> so we can start hammering and drilling at seven a.m. And I have been yelled at, but we need to get this stuff done. Yeah, I need to get stuff done too. Yeah, you know? everyone's got to get stuff done. You know what? One of the things I have to get done is sleep. That's right. Got to get that done so I can live the rest of my life. Uh, don't yell at us. I'm just trying to get it done. It's annoying when leasing agents rent out apartments that aren't done, though, so get mad at them. All right, you can get mad at them if you want. I don't want to get mad at anyone. It's just in the in the moment, here's what I know. I was asleep, and now I'm not asleep because of noise. So who's making the noise? Right, where's the, where's the, where does that start, and where's the bad, where's it end? Who, oh. who wakes up? Tell me if you, if the guy who wrote this was ever in my position, do you ever get awoken by jackhammer sounds and, and then look at your watch it. and be like, oh, it's okay. It's 7.30. <laughs> <coughs> so, riddle me that. I've had too many times get... I've had too many times get apartments painted, fixed, and get carpet done in three days. Yikes. Also about the dog poop. It's a long-running uh, right we have with residents. We have... Porters walk around picking up dog shit and have many, many dog trash bags and cans around the complex and people still ignore them. Hmm. Some people see it as part of the rent for us to pick up, for us to pick up their dog shit. Hmm. When we give fines for people leaving dog poop, they just see it as a fee for having a dog and pay the couple hundreds of dollars. Yeah, that's the kind of the mindset. Like it if really you lived is. in a place with a... HOA fees. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm paying 700 bucks a month. Somebody's picking up my dog shit. Right, right. Money. Like, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm already paying all this shit. Might as well, when you're landscaping, pick up some of the dog turds. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but to be honest, it isn't the worst we've had to deal with, such as a woman throwing diapers off the third floor, sex toys in our playground, etc. If you guys want to give me a call, I could tell you some wild stuff I find in people's apartments or just outside. 
I'd be happy to answer. <laughs> I find wild shit when I break into people's apartments. Dude, you should look call around. him and just be like, you ever use a hammer at 7 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. And then when he says, yeah, you just hang just up. Just hang up. <laughs> How's that? We'll ask. We'll see if the mayor has something to say. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Uh one more from Zachary. It says, Hello, Mike and Steve. This is about Beck's lyrics. Uh, In the time of champion deed, I'll the monkey. Hello, Mike and Steve. Big fan of both of you together and separately, Hong Kong. Anyways, uh-huh. I wrote an email a while back requesting that Steve read the lyrics to Beck's song, Deborah, or even possibly listen to some of the song if that's allowed, because it's absolutely insane. Then, on the very next episode, Steve started reading the lyrics to Beck's Loser, talking about how insane it was. I was hoping that this would maybe lead to Kevin remembering my email and mentioning it to Steve. Did you remember? But when I look back, I noticed that I didn't put a subject line for my email. There you go. (laughs) So obviously, you would have wouldn't have read it. Anyways, please read those lyrics. They're so good. Yours truly, please don't say my name, Zachary Jones. <laughs> Dictated but not read. P.S. Steve, I am from Ventura, and it makes me happy whenever you co- tell Ventura County related stories. Hey, yeah, 805. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Let's check out Beck's Debra. Beck, Debra. Let's go ahead and check out Beck's Debra. <laughs> It's like, let's go to Carl's Debra and get a bacon, uh, Shake. East, a bacon Eastern burger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the lyrics to Debra. Ready? Yeah. I met you at JC Penny. I think your name tag said Jenny. I cold stepped to you with a fresh pack of gum. Somehow I knew you were looking for some, like a fruit that's ripe for a pickin'. I wouldn't do you like that Zanku chicken. Cause only you've got a thing that I just got to get with. I just gotta get with you and you know what we're gonna do. I wanna get with you and your sister. I think her name's Deborah. I wanna get with you and your sister. I think her name's Deborah. I pick you up late at night after work. I said, lady, step inside my Hyundai. I'm going to take you up to Glendale. Going to take you for a real good meal. Because when our eyes did meet, girl, you know I was packing heat. Ain't no use in wasting no time getting to know each other. You know the deal. Because only you got a thing that I just got to get with. I want to get with you and your sister. I think her name's Deborah. I want to get with you and your sister. And I think her name's Deborah. Lovely lady. Girl, you drive me crazy. You drive me crazy. Guys, listen. Thank you for listening to today's show. Mike, you got any plugs? I got a plug. Yeah. Sixteenth already happened on April nineteenth through the twenty third. I'll be at the Moon Tower Festival. I'm talking about doing surrounded shows in Austin, Texas, on the nineteenth, twenty, twenty first, twenty second. The rest of my shows from uh, April will be posted on my IG stories. Steve, the day before we go to Salem, Oregon, on five twelve. I'm going to be trying stuff out at the world-famous Hollywood Improv Lab with Whoa. a couple of my friends. Thursday? I'm that Thursday. Thursday. Before we go to Salem Oregon. So you must be flying out early Friday morning to Salem. That's 100% right. And boy, will my arms be tired. You can get tickets to see me and Steve in Salem, Oregon on the website. On the website. Just go to the website. Salem. S-H-G dot com. It's a website.
We had Joe Duart do the poster to the show, and it is awesome. It makes me want to go to the website. Oh, guys, Fridays on Twitch.tv slash The Valley Folk. I've been starting to do shows with my pal Anna Lori, who's on D- uh, Gotham Nights on the CW on Tuesdays and Wednesdays on the CW app. And my friend Anna and I have been doing this show where we show each other weird TikTok videos. Uh, and that's Fridays at 10.30 a.m. So if you're listening to this before that happens, guess what? You can check out twitch.tv slash the valley folk and watch Anna and I do crazy shit and be fun. That was a HeadGum Podcast.